welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from Powersonic and Apprentice One to One. In today's video we're going to install an EV charge point. This one's from Tesla and there are a few unique elements of that that you need to be aware of and I'll explain it better later on in the video. Um, other manufacturers have some of this technology built into their charging devices so you don't need to do this with all charge points but with a Tesla one which is what the customers supplied on this job they're getting a Tesla vehicle and they wanted the same Tesla charge point to match. It's not one we've supplied and um, yeah there's a little bit of other elements to the install that you need to consider um, primarily because the Tesla doesn't check for pen faults um, it also doesn't monitor for DC leakage so we've we've got those two flies in the ointment there straight away um, we also need a type BRCD on the supply and um, we spec a solution based on the Matty product and I will show it later on in the video but we've got the pen fault protection in there we've got the B type RCD in there and uh, yeah, we're trying to make sure that this is safe for use for the customer, fully tested and um, ready to go. The submain down to the garage we assumed was two 2.5mm steel wire armors in parallel. Actually turned out that that wasn't the case, but fortunately we'd specced and priced for bringing a new submain down there as well. And um, we managed to draw down existing ducting that we knew was to the required depth and um, we're all good there. We managed to protect that uh, cable down to the garage with a fuse in a little switch fuse towers inside. Uh, we couldn't show any footage of inside the house because the owners weren't comfortable with us filming in there, which is totally fine. We've got plenty of the footage out uh, in the most interesting part of the job, and I hope you find it useful. We'll jump straight to it now, and um, you can see what you think. Please get involved in the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It makes a big difference to being able to keep this going, knowing that people are finding value in it, and it helps other people find it as well if it could you know, potentially help them in their learning. This is all kind of aim towards apprentices so hopefully um, people out there are finding this useful. But anyway I've waffled enough we'll jump straight into the video and um, we'll see how this one progresses. So this is the start of that steel wire armour that I was speaking about it's the two 2.5mm three cars in parallel uh, they punch straight through into a consumer unit inside there's also the um, meter and whatnot so we're going to split the tails in there and go to a switch fuse and then drop out to the garage with the 10mm steel wire armour. There is some ducting And the other end of that is over here, so you can see they pop out there. We're going to try and see if we can draw down without having to dig up the garden. Hopefully the ducting's clear. This is what we've got in the garage. So there's the little board here with um, quite a few cables dropping down into it, but in essence it is supposedly two radials. Uh, we've got a lighting circuit and a socket circuit. Client uses quite a bit down here, so we need to upgrade this cable. I know with the conductors in parallel we could have gone to 32 amps on that and it would have covered our charge point but not left a lot of capacity for much else and uh, customer wanted a bit more oomph down here plenty of scope for that with the supply they've got in the house uh, load in there is pretty small so we're, we're okay no electric showers or electric cookers it's all um, gas so we've got the Tesla here that's been supplied by the customer we've got some of the um, other considerations when you're installing a Tesla so I'll show you a bit of that later on in the video so we've got some other equipment as well to go in it's going to be installed here uh, we're going to install a bit of tray across the top and then drop down into the new consumer unit at that end and also um, fit the other equipment I was on about as well over that side. But for the time being we're going to get stripped out, see if we can get the new steel wire armour over this side. We'll go from there. I can't film in the house so we'll have to just basically focus on the EV install down here in the garage. But I'll talk you through it in a bit. Matthew's just looking like he's busy, uh, not really doing anything, don't know quite what he's measuring. Uh, Measuring what? For the tray. Measuring for the tray. Okay. We'll jump on with it. Using these to mount the, the tray, you'll see in there they've got the captive nuts held in. Uh, so we can sit them on top of the, the joist. My fuse just getting these put up, up here now. So we've lasered in a line. We're just popping them on it. Just a bit nicer to sit the, the tray on something, I think, rather than just screw it straight onto the rafters. So yeah, we're using these. Jump back on with it. So it was a good job we did um, spec this job for a new cable over to the garage because it isn't actually two 2.5s in parallel as we stripped it all apart. There's um, some controls for lights on the garage that link into the house and that's off this one. And then we've just got the one 2.5 um, down there. So obviously that needs stripping out. Um, so yeah, good job we by accident and sort of on purpose got that right. Okay, so we've got the new cable through now. 
came through all right, we had to tie it on nice and tight, draw through on the old 2.5, bit of cutting and taping fluid on the outside of the um, SWA enabled it to slide a bit smoother. I'll show you over here. There we go. So we're now out this end and uh, we're going to come up through the wall into the switch fuse and then obviously we can rejoin back in with a lighting cable as well, tidy all that up. Um, not been getting wet but Mr Insect's been getting in somehow so we'll make sure it's nicely sealed. It looks like to be they've been coming in the back, look. So that's just not been sealed up quite right, so we'll tidy all that up as well. And there, uh, yeah, we're in now. We can go and get on with starting the EV work. So we've gone with the storm glands. Um, not really needed for in here, in, in truth. We didn't need them for the IP rated anyway, but they are quite handy and easy to use. Um, still got to do a normal steel wire armor gland on this smaller 2.5 cable. I guess we've only got the 20 mil storm glands. And... Uh, yeah, you'll see if I show you. This is how they clamp together if you're not familiar with them. So they have a little clamping ring inside. And uh, yeah, you can see here the instructions for using it. We've got the ones with the piranha nuts on ours. I'll show you inside there. I've still not finished dressing it in. Uh, but yeah, got it to that stage. Um, pretty impressive. Nice, easy way to gland off a cable. And obviously down the other end at the house, we can use those as well. So I'm going to crack on. So this is the extra little product we've got to go with a Tesla charge point. Um, Teslas don't have DC monitoring built into the charger. I think more of that is done with the vehicle itself. So it, it needs um, an air thread or a pen fault detection device, which is what this is. It's the Matty one and it's with the Type B RCB, uh, RCD as well, RCCB. And we've also got a, an MCB on there as well to lead over to the charger. So the basic principle is the charger goes into these terminals and your incoming supply goes into here. So we're going to bring a feed across now from our garage consumer unit that we've got here with its new 10mm steel wire armor cable into it. It's just over this side into, into here and then we're going to wire out to the Tesla charger from this and get it all screwed back to the wall and then we'll jump back on in a second and um, show you that all connected. Okay, so we're getting there now. We've got all our CPCs in, we've got our final circuits in, our CBOs for the sockets and lights here down in the garage. MCB over to the uh, Matty device, which is here. So we've got this all mounted up. I'll, I'll run through it all when we've got it powered up. But coming across in a little bit of trunking into the bottom of it, just to link the two together. We've got this steel wire arm going out to the car charging point that we need to get cleated up. And um, yeah, we're going to get on with that now. A bit of cleaning up to do down here as well. Tidy it all away, and then I'll jump on maybe when we're at the testing stage and um, we'll run through a bit of EV charge testing. I just need to clean up a little bit on the stuff now we've been drilling in these cleats and it's got a little bit dusty so we've got the steel air arm going over to the um charge point that's cleated at the side of this trunk in which has got the final circuits in the garage in um for the sockets and the light sockets on a b16 rcbo and the lights on a v6 you can see them in there and yeah the existing wiring in the garage is fine um it's been on an rcd in the house anyway for some time not had any issues with tripping or anything, but we've given it a test through and um, yeah, no great dramas with that. Uh, over this side, I actually can see the, the tray work up there. So we bring the steel wire arm onto the tray it's just to hold it. It wasn't really anywhere we could have easily cleated it around um, this, this pitched roof. And it's just nicer to get it supported properly. So we've gone for the tray with supports underneath zips across to the other side and then cleats down into the top of the Tesla charger and um, this is the height the customer wants it at because it's a bit tight with a car in the garage. Uh, they're supposed to be around four foot. It's a little bit higher than that but um, customer preference. So they've overruled anything the manufacturer has been specking on this one. Uh, they want to be bringing the car in the garage to charge it up and um, when they're opening the doors and stuff they didn't want to be bumping into this so they just asked for it a little bit higher. So that's the reason for that. We're going to I'll open it up and we'll have a look inside because we've still got to take some test readings from there. Matthew's just jumped on a little bit further ahead than I envisaged. Uh, he's in the house now, just connecting up the switch fuse in there. So we've um, got power down to here and we can start doing some of the, the testing on our new circuit and make sure everything's okay to energise. Uh, I won't run through the whole test process again. In my last video, you saw us do it on a on a little building similar to this actually. So we've, we've covered that. I'd rather have a little look at the EV testing. So we're going to have a fiddle around with our 
TIS EV testing adapter and um, see what happens. But yeah, just with a, the Matty, again, as I mentioned, we've got the uh, Type B 40 amp uh, RCD in there. And it's important it's Type B because that's what the, the Tesla needs. And it's also got an MCV in there, a C32, uh, as part of the, the feed into that. So, I mean, if we was just doing a charge point, we could have come down into this and straight over to it. But because we've got other final circuits in here, we've had to be a little bit um, clever, if you like. <laughs> I call it clever, but it's the only way you can really do it. So we've got the um, the feed over into here, which is a 10mm 3 core steel wire armour. Uh, we're putting a 50 amp fuse in at the switch fuse inside. In fact, I will get a picture of the Lawson switch fuse holder that we're using. Uh, it's a Lawson switch fuse and... Um, I'll show you that as well, just so you can see what we've used to, to sort out the supply down to here. Because as you'll see in some of my other videos, you can have issues with selectivity. I won't be worried about it in this instance anyway, because it's a small, simple domestic installation. And if the breaker down in the house goes, yeah, as well as the breaker down here, it's no great drama to anything. But, you know, it just helps a little bit. And there was no room in the consumer unit anywhere in there. So we had to split the tails and um, do that. I'd like to show you, but we can't. And uh, yeah, we'll get on with some testing. Yeah, so we've got through the sequence of testing now with the EV tester. There's that much flipping around at Leeds and messing about. It's impossible really to show and um, get it on camera nicely. So I haven't filmed it. Um, batteries are going a bit low on the test set now as well, but we have been through the sequence. It's basically a case of jumping around the dials on here on the uh, TIS EV test 100 adapter and adjusting um, as the test set leads you through it. If I show you actually in here, if you go into the EV test and start the process, it'll tell you on the screen exactly what needs connecting where, and then as you run through it, it kind of builds on that as you go along. But we're all on now, all tested, so happy enough with that. Obviously all of the usual electrical tests as well are all fine, and um, we're just going to have a bit of a tidy up, and then I'll get a last run through on the job to show you it all finished. So just give us a sec and we'll jump back on. So there we are all done, we've got the cables coming up into this consumer unit, one's to switch the lighting down here from inside the house and the other is the feed into this board as we've already spoken about and then into the, the Matty board with its B uh, type RCD and then its circuit breaker over the top through all of this, this tray, you can see we've popped up and then down and across and into the charge point and that's all glanded in top again with a storm gland you can't see it because it's buried in uh, the cable now but yeah it's uh, looking pretty decent all ready for the customer to car that's coming in a couple of weeks see the storm gland over here on the top of this one and equally the storm gland down under there we had to choose a normal steel wire armor on this one because we didn't have any of the smaller storm glands but impressed with those from uh, SWA decent decent they work very well Need to twist them up by hand and they kind of just about bite in nice and tight as that anyway and then a quick half turn at the end just with um, a spanner to get it nipped up nicely is all that you need nice um grab on it so it's good it's good and we'll jump off into the van and have a chat about the job and exactly what we've done obviously we need to certify this it's not olev um char chargeable i'll spin it around actually if i press that you can't claim the olev grant on these because they don't have the the dc leakage detection built in and they're not smart chargers so they don't cover them on the grant system any longer and uh, the customer was aware of that uh, still disappointed about it they don't really understand why it doesn't qualify but yeah they wanted the tesla charger it's not one we supplied they've got it themselves brand new tesla model 3 is turning up in a couple of weeks and uh, they're all ready for charging i'll have a little chat in a bit so we're in the van on the way home now i hope you enjoyed watching that it was um, a pretty decent one we didn't have to dig the garden up in the end Fortunately, the ducting was clear, and I'm glad we priced that job based on bringing a new submarine down to the garage, um, because it did look from the from the outset, from what the customer had told us, that it was just parallel 2.5s. wasn't the case. Matthew's really enjoyed himself. Looks working outside in the cold uh, with tiny little whisker boxes and massive storm glands. Found that loads of fun, didn't you, Matthew? Yeah, it was a bit of a squeeze. Made it fit. Eventually. <laughs> uh, dear. Could say so much, but I won't. Yeah, it was a bit of a tricky one because we didn't have any um, decent sized whisker boxes on us for um, just glanding the cable through the wall. So when we come to do that into the switch fuse, um, 
not been able to get it through without a, a whisker box on the outside of the wall and uh, yeah we had a bit of fun and a bit of cursing trying to get it get it through the wall but we got it done and uh, yeah customers happy they're all ready to go with a with a tesla charge point with a matty stuff um they do have a range of three phase and other single phase ones and they are specific depending on which which charge point you're installing obviously now a lot of the newer charge points have the um detection built into them anyway i like my energy and uh, EO, a few of the other ones um, so it's not so much of an issue now but with the tesla ones if you are installing them you need an earth rod and uh, you need to ensure that you've got a type b rcd as well um, on the on the cable in leading up to it so yeah just a nice straightforward little ev job that we've put a bit of a spin on with the, the tray work that we've popped up over the top and again we could have really found a route round to cleat that but it just seemed to be a bit nicer make a better job of it and knowing the um, youtube community out there who like to critique everybody's work i thought i'd go for belts and braces i spoke to neil about it actually the other day and he found it very amusing as well um, but yeah it's just the way it is you see these jobs coming up onto youtube and people um getting pulled apart sometimes for the work they've done i saw an ev job recently actually that i didn't think was the best but the last thing i want to do is drop into the comments and start acting like a knobhead so i didn't bother and uh yeah it's not the, not the way to go for me but hit me with it if you want to drop something in the comments that you think what we've done is a load of rubbish then let me know if you're enjoying the videos please like and subscribe to the channel matthew's eventually going to start saying some more on camera um, we'll embarrass him if he doesn't but yeah we'll catch you on the next one